In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Lord, graciously give us your Holy Spirit. Guide us from within. Give us your light, your discernment. Enkindle our heart with the fire of your Holy Spirit. Incline our will toward yours. We ask you this through the powerful intercession of Our Lady, who is always present among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, good evening, uh, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome back to this. Um, um, this is lesson 47 of St. Omar Kamel, Book 2. We are still in Chapter uh, 22. We stopped the last time on a very... Um, uh, on a, a new paragraph, which I consider uh, marking a change or development in uh, a, a St. John of the Cross uh, presentation. <clears throat> so without further ado, let us start, uh, reread this paragraph. We read it last time uh, and let me uh, um, comment on uh, this um, new uh, level of teaching coming from uh, St. John of the Cross. So the text we were reading is here. After St. John of the Cross says that the first covenant and the old ceremonies and rites of the old law uh, are stopped, now we move on to the new covenant with Christ, but here we will see something new or developed, if you will. As we saw um, in a few, less, few lessons back, um, the fact that you remember, I said some people say that St. John of the Cross uh, um, teaching or doctrine looks a little bit similar to other uh, religions uh, teaching and so forth, but I, I showed and insisted on the fact that, uh, in fact, it's, it's deeply Christian, deeply uh, Catholic, um, very much attached to the triune God, but also uh, very much uh, attached to the person of uh, Jesus. As we said that, today we will start to notice a, a new development, and you will see to which extent uh, he will go. So let us reread the paragraph and I will underline the uh, points and then we will see them developed um, further uh, down. And so we must now be guided in all things by the law of Christ made man. Till here, this is Christ, Christ to uh, Christocentric, um, centered around Christ, the act of faith and so forth. But now he adds something a little bit new. We know he always emphasized the importance of the spiritual director, but here it's more, it's wider, it's wider. It touches on the mystery of uh, Jesus' body, uh, the church, his uh, ministers. So we need to be guided not only by the law of Christ made man, but also by that of his church. This is new. New to us, not, not to him. <clears throat> and of his ministers. And we know very well that he is capable of criticizing the spiritual directors. So it's like, what are you saying here? In a human and visible manner. In a human and visible manner. Which means what? Human and visible goes against supernatural manners. You remember, locution, visions, revelations are... Uh, described as supernatural ways or manners. They are received through a supernatural way, which means from the invisible to us. Here he says, the church, 
and he makes it very, uh, I would say, palpable, physical, uh, ministers, uh, priests, uh, spiritual directors, and so forth, in a human and visible manner. You know, when you go to confession and you hear the priest saying, um, I absolve you, uh, etc., it's a human and visible manner. You could see and you could hear, you are sure that this happened, you see. Uh, if you consult a spiritual director, the spiritual director answers. This is, you could hear the person, you know, at the, at the other end, you have somebody in front of you. You see, you're not just talking to an invisible world. I would like to add something here. For St. John of the Cross, the church is not separate from Christ. The law of incarnation for St. John of the Cross continues in the church. There is no interruption. When Jesus goes back to heaven, goes back to seat, be seated at the right hand of the Father, we could be tempted to say, okay, that's it. The human nature of Jesus is there, glorified uh, somewhere uh, at the right hand of the Father, as we say, and that's it. And we are left alone. We are left alone. No. A deeper understanding of incarnation goes further and deeper. Uh, it continues in time. The fact that Jesus went doesn't mean that Jesus is not there anymore. That Jesus is not in his church. Remember when he talks to St. Paul, what does he say? Uh, Saul, before the conversion of St. Paul. He says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why are you persecuting my church or my disciples or my apostles or this and that? No. He says, why are you persecuting me? Which means I am present in the church, in, a, a, in the, all the members of the church. I am alive and I am with them. So the work of the incarnation needs to be understood in a deeper way. The church, each one of us, and the church with its structure and so forth, is a continuation of Jesus, the extension of Jesus. Yes, of course, we, we develop that, we understand it better. Today, the church is composed of as sinners, uh, as members, and the church is striving all the time toward holiness, uh, to be purified, eh? semper reformanda, no? The church is constant, constantly needs to be purified in, in her members, uh, in the members, the faithful, okay? So, Paul St. John of the Cross, the act of faith, I need all your attention here, the act of faith is not only made upon Jesus, the head of the church. It is made also upon Jesus, who is present in the church, as the head of the church. We always say that the bishop, for instance, represents Jesus, the head. You see, represents, is ordained. There is something that is bigger than the human being that we have in front of us. There is something bigger in the priest that we have in front of us. We have, for instance, in the mystery of the priest or the bishop that we have in, in front of us, we have two sides. We have the visible side, the human nature of this uh, man, this priest, this bishop. And we have also the sacrament of ordination, the seal of the ordination of this priest or of this uh, bishop. So we have two sides. We have the, the weak man who can sin and who does unfortunately sin, who is like us, who can understand us. But in the same time, there is a mystery. He is carrying something that is beyond himself. The priest if he's not ordained, 
This man cannot forgive, cannot say in the name of God, I am forgiving you. He cannot transmit this uh, um, forgiveness of God, forgiveness of God. He cannot, don't have the capacity to use Jesus' blood to forgive. You see, so it is important to understand that we have these two sides and the temptation is to forget about the presence, the very presence of Jesus in his ministers. As difficult as it can be as an act of faith for the majority of us, but it's important to learn to make this act of faith. You see, uh, St. Francis of Assis used to um, go for confession to a priest who was known to be um, having an affair with a woman. So adult, adult, uh, how do you say this? Uh, she's adulteress and he is adulterer. How do you say that? He's not married, so he's not an adulterer, a fornicator, I suppose. Uh, whatever. You see what I, well, you see what I'm trying to say. So he was known, but he used to go to him. Why? To show us that what I'm seeking from the priest is not this human side of him, the weakness, the sinner. Or the possible potential sinner but he's seeking the other aspect in the priest if i respect the priest it's because there is something much bigger than the priest in the priest you see so this sort of uh, we need to be very careful here it's not because he's a sinner or he's capable of sinning god forbid but it does happen that we shouldn't also be able to look at the other side and recognize the other side, especially when it's about us, not about him. We're, we need the priest, you see. We need the priest. So uh, we need Christ in the priest, you see. Okay? So, <clears throat> St. John of the Cross here, crosses this line if you want he's not talking anymore about jesus and for i uh, forget about the rest no he says no there is more jesus is still there in 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 different manifestations there's not it's it's all catholic doctrine by the way there's nothing uh, new there so we must now be guided in all things by the law of christ made man and by uh, that of his church and of his ministers in a human and visible manner. You see, the, I, I hope you measure these, this, this part of the sentence, this part of the sentence, in a human and visible manner. I'm not seeking mysterious things. I'm not dealing with the invisible. I'm not curious to know or to receive certain things. I can receive it through in a human and visible manner. I can receive the divine through the human and visible manner. And by these means, we must remedy our spiritual weakness and ignorances. Since in these means, we shall find abundant medicine for them all. Of course, it requires a robust act of faith. It, it requires um, a great uh, humility, but it is necessary. Uh, um, if we want to go to confession, God knows how um, um, it can be difficult uh, to say, okay, why am I supposed to go to um, a human being and confess my, my sins? So I'm here, I would be lacking faith. I'm, I'm not going just to a human being. I'm going to Christ who wanted to have his authority in this weak and sinner possible, potential sinner human being in front of me. He wanted it to work this way as exactly he wanted, for instance, in the writing of the Gospels. I'm not saying that they were sinners, but of course it's possible. Uh, no, uh, but he, he didn't dictate his Gospel. He wanted his Gospel to be written through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit by a man called Matthew, by a man called Luke, or whoever wrote, and, and um, um, etc., Mark and Paul and so forth. So, if we leave this path, what is this path? It's the uh, acknowledgement or conf confession of the logic of the incarnation. 
The incarnation is not just the incarnation of the Son of Man. The incarnation continues till today. The church is part of Christ and still alive. So it's not that just Christ existed 2,000 years ago and he's gone. No, Christ is alive. Why have you persecuted me, he said, which means that Jesus is still alive in the church. Despite all what can happen, despite of, for instance, uh, nowadays from a few decades, it's disastrous things are, are occurring and, 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 and horrible things are made by um, a priest and so forth. But still, Jesus is there. Jesus is there and acting and wants to act. It's a painful uh, um, way of the cross uh, for us, but still Jesus is there. If we leave this path, which means if we abandon the logic of incarnation, the fullness of the logic of incarnation, which reaches us, thank God we have priests. There are areas in the, in the globe where you don't find priests. You have to walk for miles and miles and miles in order to find one priest or one mass. But thank God we still have priests and we need to pray to have always a priest. We have access to as he says here, to uh, <clears throat> um, the abundant medicine, as, as he says, um, you see. Um, okay. Now, if we leave this path, we are guilty not only of curiosity. This, it's, it goes very far because it's sort of like ex <laughs> excluding all the people who, who do not believe in the church. Who do not believe that Jesus is in the church? Who do not believe that the Holy Spirit is acting in the church? So we are guilty not only of curiosity, which means I want to access God, but not through the church, outside of the church. Knowingly, of course. But of great audacity. It's like, how dare you? No. Nothing is to be believed in a supernatural way, which means coming from a means that is not the means of incarnation. God, the invisible God, the inaudible God became audible. Jesus. Jesus is gone, uh, died and uh, is risen and, and is seated, ascended and seated at the right hand of the Father. But he personally is still present in his church and talks through his church. You see? So it's physical. It's not a supernatural way in the sense of excluding the human aspect or the extension of the uh, incarnation. Incarnation is carne. Carne means body. Uh, flesh carne incarnation means in the flesh god is still in the flesh today because we still have the church so this is the a deepening of the mystery of the church as a, a, a presence of jesus among us okay so nothing is to be believed in a supernatural way save only that the way which is the teaching of Christ made man, as I say, and of his ministers who are men. Which means it's physical, it's flesh, you can see the person, you see. So much so that St. Paul says these words. If any angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we man preach unto you let him be accursed and excommunicate so no other gospel i imagine there are many thoughts in your in your mind occurring questions doubts and how come and there are deviations we had deviations there are heresies and so forth the church is not just a peaceful uh, uh, ship um, cruising uh, uh, a calm sea and so forth yes but still it's our act of faith in the presence of Jesus which is uh, re recompensed by, by the, his grace it's from our side you see let us continue uh, 
uh, if you have questions, just keep them there and then um, we will uh, address them. Wherefore, since it is true that we must ever be guided by that which Christ taught us and that all things else are, uh, are as nothing and are not to be believed unless they are in conformity with it, he who still desires to commune, to communicate, to deal with God after the manner of the old law, the Old Testament, the, the prophecies and contacts with God, etc., acts vainly. Act vainly. <clears throat> Which means with no avail. En vano anda. With no avail. You are making the efforts, but you won't have any fruit. Furthermore, it was not lawful at that time forevermore to inquire of God. Neither did God answer all men. He's even talking back again to the Old Testament, showing us that even in the Old Testament, not everybody was able to consult God. It's only the prophets and kings had the contact, direct contact with God. But the normal people, no, they had to go to the prophet and the king and ask for um, uh, uh, ask their questions. But only the priest, not king, sorry, priest and prophets, but only the priest and prophets from whose mouth it was that the people had to learn law and doctrine. You see? So even in the Old Testament, people had to go to the priest and prophet in order to consult God. They never went directly. And thus, if a man desired to know anything from God, he inquired of him, this is the Old Testament, He's just opening a parenthesis regarding the Old Testament. Through the prophet or priest and not of God himself, you see. And if a man desired to know anything from God, he, en he inquired of him through the prophet or priest and not of God himself. You don't go directly to God, you go to the priest and prophet. And if David inquired of God at certain times upon his own account, he did this because he was a prophet. And yet, even so, he did not... He did it not without the priestly vestment, as it is clear uh, was the case in the first book of the Kings, where he said to Abimelech the priest, "Applica um, ephod," which means "put on me the ephod," which ephod was one of the priestly vestments, having which he then spake with God. But at other times he spake with God through the prophet Nathan. Nathan and all the other pro and other prophets and by the mouth of these prophets and of the priest men were to believe of the priest men were to believe that that which was said of them came from God they were not to believe it because of their own opinions and thus Men were not authorized or empowered at that time to give entire credence to what was said by God unless it were approved by the mouth of priests and prophets. This is, this is a, a, an incursion into the Old Testament after having left it and finished it. He comes back to it and just wants to strengthen this point. Now, this is a very interesting um, um, declaration, I would say from St. John of the Cross. And I need all your attention and I would say sense, sensitivity, perception uh, of God himself. He's telling us something about what God likes. It's like, from where do you know that? But he tells us, so we, he's teaching us. What does he say? He says, God is so desirous that the government and direction of every man should be undertaken by another man like himself, and that every man should be ruled and governed by natural reason. I will come back to this here. Forget about this uh, square parenthesis. That he earnestly desires us not to give entire credence to the things that he communicates to us supernaturally, 
nor to consider them, uh, consider them as being securely and completely confirmed until they pass through this human aqueduct, aqueduct of the mouth of man. Wow. I don't think many people know this. And I don't think many people would abide with this. This is so um, demanding. But it's a revelation. He is telling us something about God himself. He says God is so desirous. I have to confess that this um, passage um, caught my attention in a very powerful way so many years ago. In Spanish, porque es Dios tan amigo que el gobierno y trato del hombre sea también por otro hombre semejante a él. Tan amigo. God is so amigo means friend, no? He's so friend of the fact. It's a, it's a Spanish uh, form of, of, of speech, no? God is so desirous that the government of the, uh, and direction of every man should be undertaken by another man like himself. How many times we feel like we are reluctant to have recourse to another person, uh, to open ourselves to another person, why? Because the other person is a sinner. The other person, I, I, I call the other person a bag of potato, no? Mm -hmm. The other person is a bag of potato. It's a human being, no? It's a bag of potato. No? It's like you expect God to talk to you through a bag of potato. Of course not. Mm -hmm. But he's a bag of potato like you. But this bag of potato is not a bag of potato. Only. And this is where the act of faith lies. Do you believe that it's not only an act, a bag of potatoes? Do you believe that this in this flesh, God is so desirous to guide you? You see where he's going. So people who say that, yeah, <laughs> he was inspired by other religions or by other things, they don't, they don't know him. I mean, who can write such such a statement if he's not not only believing in Christ, but in a very incarnate and fleshy way in Christ. The church, the extension, prolongation of Christ himself, and priesthood. It's incredible. It's incredible. He didn't say priest, but he says, he said, every man, um, um, a man like himself. It is shocking, no? And he says, God is so desirous. Our tendency is, is exactly, uh, often exactly the opposite. It's like, I want to know what I wanted to know by, my, by myself and find my own means. Or go for this or this revelation or manifestation or miracle or, or apparition or, or God knows what. But to go and talk to a priest and ask the con uh, advice from, from a priest or from a spiritual director, no, who would do that? You see, this is the sad thing. We don't have this faith. Do you see his faith? Do you see his faith in the extension of the, the, the incarnation? Not only faith, but an appreciation that we don't have anymore today. We lost it because of the, the difficulties we find in the church, because of the weakness of our uh, perception. We, we, see the, we see the human side of the priest, but we don't see this presence of Christ in the priest. Or, or in the spiritual director, if, if you want. You see, we, we don't function like that. You see how weak is our faith. We consider that the incarnation ended uh, 2,000 years ago, roughly, you know, when Jesus is gone, when Jesus is away. Jesus is not away. Jesus is present in his church. Do you see Jesus? Do you, do you guess with your act of faith, his presence, in, in, for instance, in this um, a man like himself. Another man, sorry. Another man like himself. Would you have recourse to God through a man 
like yourself, a human being like yourself, a bag of potato. Potatoes, plural, no? plenty of potatoes, big ones. You see, that's the challenge. Where is our faith? It has been weakened enormously, but it depends on us. It's a personal decision faith, you see. Why do I go to confession? Because I believe that this man, other man like me, has something different. So God will give us accordingly, according to our faith. God will guide us according to our faith. You see how the act of where to 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 which um, he he's going down to the fleshy parts of our existence and says the act of faith needs to see God there present, not in the sky, not somewhere there where Jesus says Jesus is here also. Can you see through this flesh, this other man like you? Can you see Jesus there? He is there, he says. Not only he is there, but God desires that. Tan amigo. He's so much into that. You see, God is so desirous that the government and direction of every man should be undertaken by another man. I mean, who gives you, who told you that, John of the Cross? Who told you? I'm talking to him. Who told you that? How do you know it? So desirous, which means what? Ob obtain, to, it's, it's um, the way to for us to obtain graces because the act of faith opens a gate, or helps us to obtain graces. So the act of humility and faith, faith requires humility. Without humility, there is no faith. So without this act, you can't be able, you can't see, you can't go to confession, you can't go to spiritual direction. You see? You can't open yourself to the presence of God. Why do we pray in the beginning? Why the priest, of course, prays in the in the beginning of confession? Why in the spiritual direction? Why do we pray in the beginning? Because it is something beyond us, beyond the two persons. You see, and God gives according to our faith. You go to confession with faith, you get the grace. You go to spiritual direction with faith, you get the guidance. Or God will guide you and show you something else. You see what I'm trying to say? You see? So you see, the act of faith is not only in the first or the incarnation of the head of the church. It's the, act, the incarnation that is still continuing till today. Do you see Jesus' presence? Jesus is still alive among us. Why have, do you persecute me? Which means Jesus is there. When any Christian today dies in the name of Jesus, this is Jesus dying again. This is Jesus continuing his passion. The first accounts of martyrdom, and I invite you to read them. They are extremely beautiful, theologically amazing. The first accounts of the martyrs uh, we have. When you read them, the early accounts, what do you notice? You notice that the writer sees through the martyr, Jesus himself suffering. I invite you to do that. It's, it's unique. It's unique. He doesn't see only he or she. I, it's rather than he, but it's, it's fine. Hmm? He doesn't see only a man, a Christian, persecuted and suffering and dying for Jesus. No, 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 no. He sees Jesus himself suffering in the person of this man or this woman. Jesus alive and going through his passion. And martyrdom, remember, is considered the, the, the top of the top, no? It's the, the highest level of, of, um, of holiness, you see? So, and this is what St. Luke tried to show us in the Act of the Apostles. He tried to show us uh, Stephen, St. Stephen, uh, dying exactly 
as Jesus died, but even more, we need to make an extra step. It's Jesus in Stephen who is dying in his body. He continues his passion. This is why uh, Pascal, the great uh, French uh, philosopher, says uh, the agony of Jesus will last until the end of time. The agony of Jesus, the suffering in, in the Garden of Gethsemane and so forth, his passion will continue till the end of time. It's non-stop. We have a, a beautiful passage in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, I don't remember the number now, which says that something similar. The Church continues uh, the footstep of, of, of Jesus following his path and undergoing his passion also. Because why would the Church have a different, a different fate or a different journey? You see? So, what I'm trying to sh to show you is is the uh, qu quality and depth of the act of faith. That is not only Jesus as we thought till now, no, till this lesson we thought the act of faith. You have Jesus, and then that's it. No, coming from a person who knows very well the difference between a good and a and a, and a less good. A spiritual director who can be extremely fierce against a spiritual director. I send you to the third verse of the third stanza of the living flame. He is bombarding, squashing, destroying the spiritual director. Page after page after page of rage against the spiritual director. So we are not in front of a, of a naive uh, um, uh, person, a master. No. John of the Cross is not naive when he says what he's saying right now. He knows very well. He knows very well the weaknesses, the human weakness. But despite all that, and because of that, and inside of the logic of incarnation, he says, God is still there. God is acting. Jesus is there in his church. Do you believe? Are you like St. Francis who goes and confess to a priest who is a sinner? Known, he said, in the village was known. He used to go with this, with this woman, and he still went to confess to him. Why? To show that he believes that in this bag of potatoes, this flesh, this another man like himself, that there is much more than, than, than what we, he, the eyes can see or judge. You see? Why he did that? To show us his faith. You see? This is how, uh, without being naive, we're not naive. What is wrong is wrong. What is right is right. But still, faith can go very uh, deep. So let us continue. Uh, if you have questions, um, keep them a little bit. I don't want to break the momentum. I know there are like uh, 10 questions in your mind that arise uh, for such uh, teaching of St. John of the Cross. It is probably, especially nowadays, uh, felt as, as, as a bit of shocking, um, unexpected teaching. Uh, and about still, he, he, this is his teaching. This is what he wants us to, to do. And you would think it's just this passage. No, 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 no. He comes back again and bang and bangs and bangs to, to, through to, to, to the end of, of, of this chapter. So, you see, human aqueduct of the mouth of man. Flesh. So you see how faith, the act of faith, can pierce this flesh and see something different, see Jesus. And thus, whenever he says or reveals something to a soul, he gives this same soul to whom he says, uh, he says it, uh, a kind of inclination to tell it to the person to whom it is fitting that it should be told. So God gives. Imagine God reveals. No, Teresa of Avila, she got visions. She didn't seek visions. You need to be very careful here. But people who quote Teresa of Avila and say, yeah, Teresa of Avila got visions, so therefore visions are okay. No, she didn't seek visions. She didn't run after them. But she had the humility and the faith, as he says here, a kind of inclination to tell it. She is so uh, humble that she went and told 
different spiritual director and some of them didn't see for the beginning they didn't they got they they said this is coming from the devil uh, you can read this in the uh, i think uh, the life the book of our life uh, autobiography i think it's chapter 23 i think if i'm not wrong or chapter 24 you no know, in the beginning when she was um, started to receive things you know, uh, uh, consolations or or, or things uh, when she practiced a prayer contemplative prayer you see so both when whenever he says or reveals whenever he says or reveals he gives a kind of inclination Lo dice con una manera de inclinación puesta en la misma alma. Okay. Uh, have you noticed also fitting? Hmm? To whom it is fitting? A quien conviene decirse. It's not any person. You don't go out, open the door and shout uh, and tell the entire world. No. To whom it is fitting. Uh, he is the one who says you need to know uh, um, in which hands you are putting your, your your spiritual life because as the father as the son no uh, uh, as the father like the, the, the son will be like the father the, the spiritual the son like the, the, the spiritual father so we need to be careful this is uh, by the way quoted in the catechism of the catholic church in the fourth part until this has been done you see until this has been done you don't have the confirmation. You receive the grace from God, but you don't have the confirmation. Think of Our Lady. She received the greatest grace one can ever receive, and it's her and nobody else, which is the grace of incarnation in the Annunciation. She doesn't sing her Magnificat immediately. She went, she goes and sees her cousin, her cousin, moved by the Holy Spirit, it's a little bit like the spiritual director, moved by the Holy Spirit, say, blessed the one who believed in what was told to her, and so forth. And it's only after that that she sings her uh, Magnificat. But didn't she receive the greatest, uh, uh, wasn't she pregnant? Didn't she receive the greatest grace one can receive, which is incarnation in her womb, in her heart and in her womb? She did. But the Magnificat occurs, uh, or at least is shown to us, confirmation um, is, comes from uh, her, um, her cousin. You see? Until this has been done, which means uh, following the kind of inclination to tell, I uh, went and I told the, the person whom um, it is fitting that it should be told. It is not one to give entire satisfaction. Because satisfaction here means the grace of God is not really working properly. Because the man has not taken it from another man like himself. It's strong what he's saying. It is strong what he's saying. It's, Spanish, it's, it's correct, following the Spanish. Porque no la tomó el hombre de otro hombre semejante a él. It's the same. The translation is correct. We see in the book of ju the Judges that the same thing happened to the captain uh, Gideon, Gideon, to whom God has said many times that he should conquer the Madianites. Yet he was fearful and full of doubts, for God had allowed him to retain that weakness. Until you, we are still full of fear and doubts, until we consult. Once we consult, we are confirmed. You need to distinguish two things, the grace itself and the confirmation. The confirmation is not the grace. The grace is received already. The confirmation confirms the grace itself, gives it flesh, gives it strength. So it's not that you are seeking the grace itself through another person. No. You are seeking the confirmation from God through the church, through another person. Do you understand the difference? It's a very important. So, yet he was fearful and full of doubts. Without the confirmation, this is our case. And all of us, all of us, 
I could receive a, a grace, but I'm not sure. I have an inspiration and I'm not sure. So I need to consult my spiritual director. Let's see, Father, what do you think about, about this? Well, in my case, it's a, it's a priest. So Father, what, what do you think about this? Well, am I losing the plot or, or is this a good thing or, or not? And then I listen to Jesus through him. I don't listen to, to, to another man like me. I listen to Jesus who will uh, um, shed some light. And I receive the confirmation. And I, I now I have to do uh, because I heard it. You see, it's confirmed. Or not confirmed. No, leave that. That's not the right thing. Uh, it's better to do this instead of that. Okay, fine. Now I know. Now I know. Even if it goes against, like the case of St. Teresa of Avila. No? She got, Jesus told her something in one of the visions. And then she went and consulted the, the, the spiritual director. And the spiritual director said something different. So she went back to Jesus and said, but the spiritual director said to me something different from what you said. Whom am I supposed to follow? The, Jesus answers, follow him, not me. I will change his mind. This is the reason why we love people who have faith. People who have faith. No? She came back to Jesus and said, but the, the priest said something different. You said this, he said something else. I, I, to, to whom am I supposed to listen? The answer is very clear. You listen to him, not to me, not to the vision. She did. And then he said, I will change his mind. If it's needed, he will change his mind. Why not? You see, you see how. How God is here with us. God is here with us. And this is how it works. Otherwise, I don't know. It's, uh, it's the Halloween in the mind. Yet he was fearful and full of doubts. Uh, for God had allowed him to retain that weakness. And this is valid, I think, for everybody. It's not only this person. He's just explaining how it works, how it functions. Until he heard from the mouth of men what God has said to him. It was confirmed by the mouth of this man. Confirmed. That's it. Now I'm sure. Otherwise, before, before receiving this confirmation, I received the grace, but I'm not sure. I'm fearful and full of doubts. You see? So be careful. The grace is received directly from God. The confirmation of the grace is received through the flesh of the church. And it came to pass, to pass that when God saw he was weak, he said to him, rise up and go down to the camp. That is... When thou shalt hear that men are saying, uh, what men are saying there, when you will hear what men is, are saying there, then you will receive strength in that which I have said to you. And you shall go down with greater security to the hosts of the enemy. You see? So when the, uh, the, the scripture says, uh, rise up and go down to the camp, you see how John of the Cross understands it. Yeah? Because now you will receive the confirmation, then uh, you will have greater security. And so it came to pass that having heard a dream related by one of the Magianites to another, wherein the Magianite had dreamed that Gideon uh, should conquer them, he was greatly strengthened and began to prepare for the battle with great joy. You have the strength. You have the confirmation. Otherwise, as Jesus said to Teresa of Avila, I will change his mind. From this, it can be seen that God desired. Yeah? I like this, um, this desire. For me, it's, it's, it's key, uh, as we saw it above. No, Tan amigo. So desirous. God desired not that he should feel secure, since he gave him not the assurance by supernatural means alone, 
but caused him first to be strengthened by natural means. There are people in life who can lose years, years, because they didn't have, uh, they didn't follow this logic. They didn't go and ask. They stayed with their doubts and their weakness. You, we, they haven't confessed the prolongation or the extension of the incarnation in the church. So they lost years of their life because they didn't, they weren't able or they didn't do, make, they didn't make the act of faith in, in, in the church. I believe the church. I believe in the church. Which means I believe that the Holy Spirit is acting through the church. It can be much more difficult today because of all what's happening, but I think on the more reason we should activate a greater faith in order to have this experience. This is an experience of God, experience of Christ, experience of the Holy Spirit acting in the church, through the church, you see. And God recompenses um, our faith with his grace. And even more surprising is the thing that happened in this connection to Moses. When God had commanded him and given him many instructions, which he continued with the signs of the wand, sorry, which he continued with the signs of the wand, changed into a serpent, and of the leprous hand, and joining him to go and set free the children of Israel. Now what happened to Moses? So weak was he and so uncertain. This You find this in Exodus, uh, I think, four, um, uh, chapter 4, verse 14 uh, and 15. He was so weak and so uncertain about this going forward that although God was angered, he had not the courage to summon up the complete faith necessary for going. You see, summon up. This is the invitation of St. John of the Cross to us. He invites us to summon up the complete faith necessary for going. He wants us to have this strong faith. Until God encouraged him through his brother Aaron, saying, I know that your brother Aaron is an eloquent man. Behold, he will come forth to meet you, and when he will see you, he will be glad at heart. Speak to him and tell him all my words, and I will be in, the, in thy mouth and in his mouth, so that each of you shall believe that believe that which that which is in the mouth of the other. Having heard these words, Moses at once took courage. This is the, the point here, to take courage. Faith requires courage. In the hope of finding consolation in the counsel which his brother had to give him. Faith, hope to receive the grace of God and to find the confirmation and strengthening. For this is a characteristic of the humble soul. You see here, faith requires humility and a characteristic of the humble soul is to seek God through the flesh of another person like us, which dares not to converse alone with God neither can be completely satisfied without human counsel and guidance. Yes, I have contact with God, I receive graces, but I still need to, co the, to confirm, I need to check. You see, I, don't, I, can't, I can't be misled. I don't have discernment. Even if I think I have discernment, I don't have discernment. I seek discernment every day, every day. It's not like, yes, I got the discernment, I don't need anymore. No, it doesn't exist. You 
you always seek the advice because you might lose the plot. You might uh, imagine things. Uh, you might go astray. It's very easy to go astray in spiritual life. You see? And that this should be given to it in this, um, it, to it is, sorry, and that this should be given to it is the will of God. For he draws near, see this beautiful thing here? He draws near to those who come together to converse of truth. God draws near. Every time two, two persons are um, uh, united uh, in prayer, I am amongst them. This is Jesus says that. Every time two persons or three gather in my name, in praying, I am amongst them. He draws near to those who come together to converse for truth in order to expound and confirm it in them upon a foundation of natural reason. Natural means. Um, natural reason here, as we saw it a bit uh, um, back, um, in my humble view, has two meanings. The first meaning I'm inclined to choose is uh, oppose is, is the meaning which means natural means. Remember, he doesn't want us to believe only things that come from a supernatural means. So for him, the natural mean, it's still supernatural when you think about it, the, the movement, the action of uh, the act of faith. If you seek advice in spiritual direction or you are confessing, you are, you are seeking the grace of God. You are still seeking supernatural action from God. But in the vocabulary of St. John of the Cross, this is a natural means, which means because you're having, you are having recourse to a human being like you. This is why I'm inclined to this meaning rather than just saying natural reason. Okay, but I'm happy to uh, accept both interpretations here. Here and above, uh, we had it, uh, you remember, here, natural means. In uh, the end, by the end of paragraph nine, mm? strengthened by natural means. Natural means means another flesh like me. It doesn't mean uh, things um, without means without the help of God, no, or without supernatural, without the action of the grace of God. No, 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 no. To deal with God through a natural mean, mean it means having recourse to him through a human being, flesh. Okay? Sorry, I lost my... Uh should be here yeah but well, this is a kind of criticism without human counsel and guidance here natural reason natural means the spanish is uh, fundada sobre razón natural yes the, it's tempting to tra to translate it natural reason which is just reasoning well i think it's it's natural i would prefer to use means even though neither the spanish um, nor the english um, say it <coughs> Even as he said that he would do uh, with when Moses and Aaron should come together, namely that he should be in the mouth of the one and in the mouth of the other. Wherefore, he said likewise in the gospel, where two or three have come together in order to consider that which is for the greater honor and glory of my name, there I am in the midst of them. Of course, the greater honor, etc., is not in the text. It's um, John of the Cross who adds it, but it's it's the meaning of the text. That is to say, I will make clear. You see, I will make the our faith in the church in this way allows us to have greater clarity and confirmation. This is the, the statement here. I will make clear and confirm in their hearts the truth of God. This is why shunting or excluding the faith in the church is extremely damaging 
for our faith. And God knows that many, if not the majority of Catholics, are losing day after day faith in the church. And this is extremely damaging not to understand this two sides of the story, the flesh, the weakness, the sins, and, and so forth, the necessity of a constant reformation and, and purification of the members of the church. And on the other hand, this faith in the, exist, in the presence of Jesus and the action of Jesus and the Holy Spirit in the church. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, when he comments the creed, he says, we uh, say immediately after uh, I believe in the Holy Spirit. We say I believe in the church. He says it comes immediately after because it's related to the Holy Spirit. Because we believe that the Holy Spirit is acting in the church. This is why they are very close to each other in the creed. I believe in the Holy Spirit, God, etc. And then I believe the church. I have one or two articles, by the way, in the uh, let me show them because they could help some uh, of you forgive me if i am uh, i will look for them just give me a second it's in the uh, in the website of the uh, the school of mary i want just to show you where to find them so share screen Okay, sorry, this is Google, it's not me. So this is the website of the School of Mary. If you look, you see all the articles, you go down, 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 complete at the bottom, you have general, liturgy, and church. So if you click here, you leave all the, fir the first two uh, lists of um, articles and then go to the last one, the church. The four ways of believing the church, believing in the church and so forth. I, I invite you to read at least the first two or the first three, if you will, also. okay? Um, don't go for the others, uh, maybe you don't have to, but at least the first two or, or three, okay? So I just wanted to show you. It's, it says the same thing of what we are saying uh, now, but in, in a slightly uh, different way. So let us continue. Uh, where were we? Yeah, here. I will make clear and confirm in their hearts the truth of God. And it is to be observed that he said not where there is one alone, there will I be but where there are at least two. In this way, he showed that God desires not that any man by himself alone should believe uh, his experiences to be of God. Wow. Should believe his experiences of God. Of course. Of course. Or should act in conformity with them. You see, oh, I have an inspiration. I would like to do this. Okay, fine. But have you consulted other people? Are you sure what you're doing? Yeah, I received it. I, I'm sure I, I got a message or I got prayed and I feel in my heart that this is what God is, wants from me. Okay, fine. Good. But have you consulted? No. I'm No. I know it's this. I know it's the right thing. Come on or should act in conformity with them, or rely upon them, rely upon them, but rather should believe the church or her ministers. I mean, clearer than that, you don't have. So the paragraph above where he started continues. You see, it's a, it's a full teaching. This is why I said I, did, I, I stopped the previous lesson. I said I have to stop there because now he's starting something deeper, different, uh, quote-unquote new. It's not new in itself, but maybe new to, to, to us. So you see how he bangs very powerfully um, and he shows us that the grace of God works with certain conditions. We do not possess the grace of God. We receive the grace of God and we receive the confirmation of the grace of God. We are not the ones who decide. And we need to activate our faith in order to receive first the grace of God and 
again with the church to receive the confirmation. Otherwise, it's dangerous, it's weak, and deviation is possible, uh, very much. But at least weakness, so we are not progressing. We can lose years of our life not progressing because we don't dare believe that God is acting in the church and we do not consult. The humility, consult is an act of humility to say, okay, Lord, I might be wrong. I need to consult. I might be right, but I don't know. I might be wrong. So I need to consult. I want to be sure. You see, I want to be sure. Why? In order to act. Otherwise, I won't act. I will sit fearful. You see here? Yeah? So the teaching is the same and it is repeated. So we don't have a doubt here. So, but rather should believe the church. You see the articles I showed you? To believe how to, different ways to believe in the church and uh, the, 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 the second and the third one. Please read them whenever you have time. Because they go in the same direction. They just strengthen this, this uh, point. It's part of the creed, by the way. I believe the church. It's part of the creed. It's not... Uh, so what does it mean? Should believe the church or its her ministers, for God will not make clear and confirm the truth in the heart of one who is alone. And thus such... Um, as one will be weak and cold. Now, uh, let us check here. What is he saying here? 68, with them, without the church, or... Uh, because in Spanish it says, ni se confirme, ni afirme en ellas, sin la iglesia, without. Yeah. Hmm. But rather, in, in Spanish it says, or rely upon them, without. Uh, finding confirmation and um, strength in, in without the church and its ministers. Okay. Now, I think we should stop here. Unfortunately, um, it's taking us a lot of time. But as you can see, um, there are uh, huge surprises uh, for us and immense guidance in our spiritual life. Uh, we often consider spiritual life as a personal thing, as a private thing, uh, and uh, we forget that spiritual life, that we are uh, one of the um, um, bricks um, or, or that make the, uh, the church, um, the stone that makes the church, which makes the church. We are alive, living so, uh, stones. Um, I think this is the expression we use in um, St. Peter in, in English. Otherwise, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. And um, it's important to understand that um, the church, if we do all what he's saying, that we are part of the church. And uh, it's, it's a guidance. That explain, which explains to us the working of the grace of God. What do we seek in spiritual life? Do we seek a private life? A private, personal, um, secluded, alone, lonely, uh, separated from the rest? Or um, separated from the church? We can lead a spiritual life without the church. How many people you hear them? No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm good with, with the Lord, but I don't want to deal with the church. Well, then, are you really dealing with the Lord? Are you really dealing with the Lord in this case? Do you really, are you really receiving the grace of God in this case? You see, so the functioning of the grace of God, these are the conditions of the functioning of the grace of God. I dare even to say this is the, these are the conditions of the functioning of contemplation. You, you claim to have a spiritual life, you, you claim to progress in spiritual life, but you are not um, understanding and using uh, his teaching on the church and the act of faith, not only in Jesus, but in Jesus present in his church. Well, then, where are you going? Uh, is, is, is it real or fake? Is it in your imagination or is it true? Uh, are you weak? Are you really acting? 
or maybe you are acting, but it's your own uh, enterprise, it's your own initiative, it's your own uh, your own thing. And God knows that there are uh, people also uh, like this who who like to do things, but th they do them out of their own decision and imagination. But where is it going? So you see, I want to go back to the fundamentals here. He, St. John of the Cross is explaining to us the, how the grace of God works. And today we discover these two stages of the working of the grace of God. The grace itself, the reception of the grace in our prayer life, that's fundamental. He's not saying don't pray or don't deal with God. He's saying yes, pray, but then you receive the confirmation after and the strengthening otherwise you stay weak and you can't move you are not moving so we learned this today we learned to which extent the act of faith is supposed to go that the incarnation continues today and that we are invited to have a a, a robust robust reaction robust decision to activate our act of faith and to seek god in his church despite all what we can see, what we know, what we can imagine about the church. It's a flesh, it's a man like me, it's a human being, it's a bag of potatoes. Yes, but is your faith stronger than what your eyes can see? Your eyes can only see flesh, bag of potatoes, forgive me this uh, silly, um, silly image that I'm using, but I do it on purpose because I want you to be able to pierce this bag of potato and see Jesus present there. The humility of God to dwell in the, the weakness of his church. This is his, this is his, his plan. Uh, even in the writing of the gospel, he could have sat down and dictated his gospel, Jesus. That would have freed us from plenty of questions. But no, that's not God's plan. God's plan is not to give us a text. God's plan is to work with the Holy Spirit in people and want them to write their understanding. He is inspiring them. So we learn their faith. We learn how faith became alive in their life and we want to be like them. You see, this is God's plan. So glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, well, without end. I, mean, I understand that you have plenty of questions, uh, but I think we have to stop here, otherwise the recording will go beyond an hour and ten minutes. So I do apologize. Maybe we can leave the questions for next time. If you have questions, I'm happy to uh, address them for this uh, um, challenging uh, subject. So good evening and good night and until next time.